Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going through the November gotcha releases. The main ones that I'm looking at, it's actually a really good month for gotcha. The whole year has been fairly average, but this month, hopefully most people can find a game that they will enjoy. So let's get into it. All right, so first off, we have Tales of Luminaria. Now, this has just released today globally. It was yesterday uh, in JP, I believe it was. I downloaded that, had a look. Game looks really nice. I'm going to play this a bunch tonight. Probably have a video out tomorrow if I do get the time to do it. But this game looks really nice. Now, it's a bit unique. Um, there's a couple things that, I don't know, you're either going to love or hate about it. Um, the two things that really stand out is that it's an action RPG, but <laughs> the difference between most action RPGs is that the gotcha system is weapons only. Now, some people love this because they just want to have every hero. Me personally, I actually prefer hero gotcha. Now, that may sound stupid to some people, but for me, I just like it when you don't have, like, when you've only got the base heroes and then you summon something that feels like it's new and exciting. I personally prefer that, but this game looks incredibly nice. The other thing about it is that it is going to be in portrait mode, not landscape. So that could be a red flag for a lot of people. I know a lot of people like these kind of games uh, in the landscape, but I think um, all in all, it actually does it pretty well in portrait mode. Um, the, the controls feel, it, it, it reminds me a little bit of Dragalia Lost in that sort of sense, where you sort of, the controls feel actually quite smooth for it. And as you can see, the graphics are actually Actually quite decent so I'm really looking forward to getting into this one I don't know whether the the weapon gotcha is going to be like that downfall for me but the the portrait mode doesn't really phase me and I think this is one that's really worth just at least having a look and a play for a few hours to see if you do like it even if you like portrait I think it's worth at least a try this next game is actually going to be a sponsored game for this video. However, it's a game that I've actually created a separate YouTube channel about that I've been making content for for about three months. So if you want to check out more about this game, jump over there. I'll leave a link to my uh, other YouTube channel. You can go there. Also, I'll leave a link to their Discord and website in the description. Uh, those links are just tracking links so they know that I sent you there. So if you're interested, click those links, jump through and have an explore of this world. So what this game is basically in a nutshell is an open world exploration game where you kind of roam around and find these things they call alluvials, which are kind of like Pokemon. You capture them, you can fuse them together to get to like later evolution stages, and then you take them into combat, which is auto battle, kind of like um, Dota Underlords or Teamfight Tactics is the basic idea of it. Now, the other thing is that this is on the blockchain. However, it will be free to play. You can get into this without having to spend any money. It will be initially on PC, launching in quarter one, 2022. Too, um, but then they will be developing a mobile client for it as well. And being on the blockchain, what that means is all the alluvials that you do capture in this game, you actually own. It's not like a traditional mobile game where you know you spend money in the game, but then the developer can shut down the game at any time and you just you don't have anything to show for it. You've lost your money and you've lost your things. In these ones, you actually own the assets, and it's actually fine to go ahead and sell them or trade them on a secondhand marketplace. I kind of view it a lot like I used to play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! So I have a I have a Yu-Gi-Oh! card, I can sell it to you or I can trade it with you. And that's essentially what it is bringing to games. So this game, really excited. As you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful. They're putting a lot of development into it. On top of that, at current value, they have more than $1.2 billion in in-game yield, which can be used for, um, you know, PvP tournaments, esports tournaments, anything like that. But like I said, if you want to know more, check out um, their website, check out their Discord, and also check out my third channel where I've, like I said, done a lot on this game. I'm really excited about it. It is a fair way away being quarter one 2022, but might be worth looking into now. And now we have Blue Archive. Now, I, I see a lot about Blue Archive. Now, personally, I played the JP version of this one at launch very heavily. Um, I got to rank one in my battle group. Um, I was very heavily, not monetary invested, I was free to play, but my time, I re-rolled a heap um, in this game. Now, the thing about this game that everyone got excited about was that the Yostar name was on it. Then it got <laughs> blasted with the Nexon name. Now, everyone's saying the game's going to be terrible because it's Nexon. I am not a big Nexon fan. I do understand what they've done, but the thing with this game is the gameplay is actually 
actually really fun. I don't like chibi, but these chibi models are actually the best chibi. If you had to have chibi, I'd still prefer not to have it, but you know, it is what it is. But the gameplay is actually really fun and you sort of have to play it on mobile. Like you can't just auto through stages to keep progressing. It has sweep to be able to clear stages just to dump your stamina. But when you're playing through the game, you actually have to play it on manual to get stuff done. The music is amazing. I hope they keep, keep the same music. The 2D art is amazing. I think the one downfall, two downfalls for this game. One, Nexon, because instantly people go, oh, I'm not going to try it. And then you lose player base and all that sort of stuff. But the number two, which I don't care. I, I think it doesn't matter who develops it. If, if you can have fun and just play through it free to play and get a little bit of enjoyment, why not? Um, but the second thing is that it's basically copied the, prin the uh, Princess Connect base formula for the game i really hate the princess connect summon system and the dupe system and the upgrading system and this has taken that out of all the gotcha games and that's pretty much what made me stop playing jp along with the fact that it was jp and you know i just get sick of translations and stuff like that but um the thing about this one for me was it's taken that princess connect view from gotcha and i just i find it to be really disgusting personally so that's the two downfalls for this one are going to be um the next on name and the, the the base gotcha system that it does use uh, but besides that like i said the art the music and the gameplay all incredibly enjoyable and i'll definitely play this one from launch on global try and push that arena see if i keep my interest in it um, but like i said the gameplay from the start is really fun the raids look cool all that sort of stuff but once again this one is going to be releasing i don't think i said it so i can't really say once again but this one is going to be releasing on the 8th so not too far away about three to four days away depending on where it's based off of which is UCC so about four days away three to four days and we will be getting this one next up we do have seven nights now this one is by Netmarble um and it is one of those like MMO type action RPG ones it's one of those ones that looks like a clone of every other one you do see so I'm not going to spend too much time on it it's just if you do enjoy these type of games I think this one looks pretty polished I personally I might dive into it for like an hour and see if it really grabs me these games i never give much time at all but hey you never know i just thought i'd throw this one in there to let people know in case they are interested in it the previous version uh like the the seven nights one i think is up to like a five year so it's got a good following but for me i just see these games and i'm just like instantly it just looks like all the rest so that that's my personal vibe on it but this one is coming out on november 10. Next up, we do have Revived Witch. Now, this one is another one that had the Yostar name, but actually kept it. No Nexon getting into the Yostar of this one. So this one is a 2D pixel art game, but it's it's pixel art just looks like it has like added shading and quality. I actually like this for a pixel art game. I find with a game, um, as long as the core mechanics and gameplay are fun enough, like I don't mind looking at these boss battles in pixel art. Um, things like Last Cloudia, I really enjoyed that i found that pretty cool so i think pixel art can be done really well as long as the gameplay mechanics and all that are really nice the other positive is this is yo star who do have a fantastic reputation in the industry so i will definitely be getting into this one um i put a tweet out uh a while, i mean not a tweet i put a community post out a while ago talking about upcoming games this is probably the one i'm most excited for just to give it a test now i don't know if i'm gonna love it or hate it once i do get into it um but i just think it's like a really nice presentation presented game and i i don't know the pixel art just has a bit of charm and you know depending on how the combat goes you know it could be a really nice one but this one is set to release on the uh, uh the, the 10th as well so we've got we've got uh blue archive that's launching on the 8th then we've got seven nights and revived which both launching on the 10th so busy month so far Next up, we have Figure Fantasy, formerly known as Figure Story. Um, now, this one has some charm. I think some people are going to hate this. I personally like it, and I'm probably going to play this one a fair bit because, one, it's got, like, idle-type combat, which I know a lot of people do hate. I personally really enjoy it because with the idle-type systems, that sort of gameplay, you, can, you don't have to invest all that much time to, you know, keep progressing, doing summons and all that stuff. The way I describe this game is Toy Story, with waifus but the thing that i like about it is a lot of these games coming out lately are just waifu only it's just like they go waifu 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 we got boobs you guys gotta like it and this one at least has 
non-waifus in it as well, which I actually prefer in games. As much as you all love waifus, I like having a big ass mech or something cool, like dragons. I don't think these are dragons that I've seen, but I like other stuff besides waifus as well. So that has this has got that uh, in it, but it's just like a cool concept. I've played the JP version, or is it Kareen? I can't remember, but I've played the other version and it actually, the, the graphics are actually quite cool and they have like little cutscenes that look really clean, but I just like the Toy Story vibe. I don't know how I never thought of this as a possible gotcha game, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I think it works, but like I said, a lot of people will probably hate this one but i'll probably get a solid bit of gameplay out of this one one because it's easy to play and two i just i just think it's got a bit of charm that's me personally and as for this one for date we don't know the actual date they haven't officially announced it i've been checking their twitter trying to find out um they're doing the pre-registration now i think they only just changed the name and sort of got everything happening officially as you can see i'm not even following it um but they, they've got 76 followers here on figure stories so like they've just like rebranded or just branded it and started getting the name out there so i'm thinking maybe by the end of the month it could be next month but i just thought i'd put it in here in case because it's one that <laughs> it's, it's got a bit of charm and finally, because we've been mentioning this one a lot, I've sort of fallen off the bandwagon for this one. I've seen a bit of drama in the community, all that sort of stuff, and that is Awakening Chaos Era. I just, uh, I'm just not too sold on it right now. It was fun in the first beta. They've had like four closed betas, and then, you know, the, uh, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just, this one just feels too dragged out that I don't care anymore. Um, but this one still doesn't have an official release date. I think I was playing the, the, a closed beta for this about like a year and a half ago, um, and I feel like it's just just getting dated now I, I i don't know i didn't play the last beta i still think it looks really nice for the you know the turn-based gotcha summoners war epic 7 type clone but uh yeah it's just it's, i'm just exhausted from this game so we'll have to wait and see <laughs> if this one ever comes out but just in the back of your mind they have finished their final closed beta they are waiting for official release but they have not set a date for it yet Anyway, that is going to be the end of this one. Like I said, Tales of Luminaria out now. I'm going to be playing this one. Also, Blue Archive, I'm going to be playing a fair bit of. Uh, Revive Witch, really excited for. And also, Figure Fantasy. So, big month of games. Hopefully, I can find one that I really love and we can just sink into content on the channel. But at least, if nothing else, it's a royal sample of this month. Hopefully, you can find something you like. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.